Like many people who play Dota, Pudge is my absolute favorite hero. Honestly speaking, he's about half the reason that I still play the game. So, it pains me to say this, but Pudge is, as it currently stands, a garbage tier hero. And his laning, somehow, is even worse. With that being said, the hero hasn't been reworked in ages. His spells still do roughly the same stuff that they did years ago. So, if you can get past his horrific laning stage and you're pretty good at hitting hooks, he can still be a beast. And that is what I'm going to be covering in this video. How to win lanes in Dota 2 using certain tricks, even if you're playing the most garbage laners in the game. Generally speaking, there are three categories of lanes in Dota 2. A pressure lane, a normal lane, and a cheese lane. A pressure lane is a lane where you are 90% likely to win, and it's your job to pressure your opponents in the lane, and ideally transition that into pressuring the game. A normal lane is a lane where you are about 70% likely to win the lane, and it's your job to get an adequate amount of farm so that you can contribute in the mid game. A cheese lane is anything less than 60% likely to win, where it's your job to just do a cheese strategy and try to get whatever you can out of the lane and go 50-50. Sometimes in these lanes, if you just don't feed, you'll win the game. Within each of these categories, a lane should be played entirely differently. And the biggest problem for most people's laning is not mechanics or ability to play the lane. It's that people lane as if they're in one category, but they're actually in another. Of course, when it comes to individual matchups and team composition, there is plenty of nuance in Dota, but I'm going to be largely ignoring that in this video. And that's not because I don't think it's important, it definitely is, but it just isn't for most people. This is one of what I've been recently calling a 1000 MMR problem. In other words, if this is a problem for you and you fix it, you will gain 1000 MMR instead of just a couple hundred. Getting caught up in the nuances of specific laning matchups, that's a 100 MMR problem at best, and as a bit of a side note, this is actually one of the biggest debates for intermediate Dota 2 players, where they get stuck at an MMR plateau because they stop thinking about the game in simple terms, and instead they obsess over the nuance. With that being said, let's take a look at the 5 biggest, easy to solve problems that people have within these laning categories. Problem number 1. People play a lane as if it's normal when they're actually the ones getting pressured. Sometimes we can identify that all we need to do in a game is not feed and we're going to win. These games are some of the freest games in Dota, but oftentimes people make these the hardest because they try to do the impossible, they feed, and then the enemy team snowballs. In order to better understand this problem, we need to take a look at the typical draft order in a pub game. In a typical pub, the pick order usually goes 5 roll, then 4 roll, then offlaner, then carry, then mid, sometimes with the offlaner and carry swapped, and sometimes with the 4 position and 5 position swapped. If your team is first pick, then it means you first pick a core, usually the offlaner, and that hero is going to get core countered because the enemy carry picks after them. But your other two cores, usually the mid and the carry, get to see 4 heroes before picking. If your team is second pick, there are similar issues that can arise with the draft. The bottom line is, there are three lanes in Dota, and certain players get to pick after others. So, given a perfectly balanced draft, it will likely be someone's job to simply do damage control while losing their lane. In fact, there's generally one losing lane, one winning lane, and one lane that goes 50-50. So, pay attention to the draft. If the enemy players pick specifically to counter your hero, it's likely that your other lanes are favored to win. So don't fret, and instead execute a strategy that will allow you to get something out of the lane. If you're in the off lane, pull the second creep wave between your tier 1 and tier 2. You can rinse and repeat this for as long as you like to 50-50 the lane. I do this every single game on Pudge because the hero is so garbage at laning. If you're in the mid lane, just push the lane and go jungle. Most heroes can't stop you from doing this and you're going to always end up farmed. If you're in the safe lane, then chain pull the easy camp without stacking it and pull the hard camp. This will constantly send the enemy team double waves, but it will guarantee that they can't pressure you because of said double wave and you'll also get some farm no matter what. Number 2. People overplay in pressure lanes and feed. For whatever reason in Dota, people like to play aggressive and a lot of people have a massive problem with overplaying their hand when it comes to laning. In order to understand this problem better, we need to take a look at the strategies that you can employ to actually crush a lane, because generally the problem is people have identified that they're strong, and they're correct about that. But they don't know how to play from ahead, and that is what leads to the feeding. 
Strategy number one, bodying the wave. This strategy is as obvious as it sounds. You just put your body on the creep wave. If the enemy hero walks up, you right click them and you cast spells on them. If they don't walk up, then you last hit and deny absolutely everything. In either case, you don't have to dive the enemy team or do anything crazy and get yourself killed. It is simply putting your body in the right area and a lot of people will be winning a lane, but they won't body the wave and they're gonna let the enemy team get last hits when they shouldn't. Strategy number two, pushing, pulling, and diving. In this strategy, you push the wave using whatever spells you can, then you dive the enemy team if the creep wave is large enough to tank the tower, or if you feel uncomfortable doing that, you can simply pull the creep equilibrium back using the hard camp or using some sort of camp, and then kill the enemy heroes when they come over to contest that. In any case, you're going to get kills on the enemy team without having to do anything crazy. Strategy number three, and this is the ultimate strategy, and you can do this if you are very strong, pushing, diving, and forcing the enemy team out of XP range of the tower. This strategy, you essentially do the push-pull strat, except instead of pulling, you push through and go to an equilibrium that is behind the enemy tier 1 and in front of the enemy tier 2. So this is a bit of a crazy strategy, but a lot of the time, if you are very much so owning the lane, you can get away with this. And the reason this is the ultimate strategy is because it prevents the enemy team from getting any XP or gold whatsoever, because a creep wave behind you will die to the enemy tier 1 as you are zoning them between their tier 1 one and tier two. If you understand these strategies and are ready to implement them, then it's pretty easy to not fall victim to this problem because these strategies are formulaic. You can rinse and repeat them in the exact same way in every game, so all it takes is a little bit of practice. Improvising in Dota is usually where stuff gets crazy, which is fun, don't get me wrong, but that's not great for consistency. This leads me to the third problem as well, which is people play scared when they're supposed to pressure. I believe that people have this problem for the exact same reason that others have the second problem of playing the opposite of scared, which is crazy. But it's a different personality type that falls victim to this one. More reserved people will play scared when they don't know what to do and they're strong, and crazy people will overcompensate and die. So in either case, the play is to simply figure out which of the three strategies works best for your favorite heroes, and when you're favored to win lanes, rinse and repeat these strategies. Number four. People play normally and they don't do cheese strategies when they're in 50-50 lanes. This problem might sound weird to people at first glance, like, hey Jenkins, shouldn't you play normal in 50-50 lanes? Isn't that the definition of normal? But it's actually not in Dota. In Dota 2, most pro players will choose to play safe when given the choice, and cheesing the lane is the safe choice. The reason for this is because there are so many chances to win a typical game of Dota that you don't need to do anything nuts to win the game. All you have to do is wait for the right opportunity which will surely present itself and capitalize on that when you know it's going to work. To give you a concrete example, let's say you're laning as a Doom plus Snapfire versus Gyro and Lich. Who wins that lane? Hell if I know. This is the sort of lane that I'd look to cheese when I'm unsure because I know that when Doom hits level 6, he's much stronger because of his Doom ability. And that's when I'd look to pressure instead of in the early levels where I'm not entirely sure who wins that lane. The general rule of thumb is, even if you're 60% sure that you're favored to win the lane, that's not good enough odds. 60-40 odds is good if you're at a casino, but if you have 60-40 odds of getting on a plane and surviving until you get to your destination, well, obviously that's not so good. It all depends on the severity of this 40% chance. In the case of Dota, losing a lane is significantly more severe than going even in a lane, so pros tend to err on the side of caution and cheese lanes when they're not sure of a matchup. So anytime you have an inkling feeling that a lane might somehow have a little bit of throw potential, or in the case where you aren't sure if you win or lose the lane, just cheese it using one of the strategies that we discussed earlier. Number five, people don't adapt their laning category as the game progresses. As a follow-up to the fourth point, the reason that cheesing lanes that you could potentially win is usually fine is because Dota heroes have power spikes. In reality, everything in competitive Dota is about power spikes. The interesting thing about these spikes is that they aren't really linear growths, they're spikes. For example, you can have every component to a bloodstone disassembled, and it's just stats. But the moment you combine them, you all of a sudden have scaling magic damage, scaling mana regen, and an insane life-saving active, 
all from the same amount of gold. Going back to the Doom example, your hero can be 99% of the way to level 6, but you still won't have the Doom ability until you hit exactly level 6. In other words, on the flip of a switch, you can go from a 50-50 laning situation to a 90-10 situation because of a power spike or vice versa. So, during the draft, try to assess at what levels you'll be very strong, what points the enemy lane will be very strong, and identify if the lane category changes based on those strengths. For example, once Pudge hits level 2 and level 3, he's much stronger than at level 1 because he actually has kill threat with hook and rot, but he's total garbage at level 1, so you cheese until level 3 and then you play the lane normally. As a bit of a side note, items matter a lot less in the laning stage, so it's usually best to focus on just levels, but if you want to get into the nitty gritty details, sometimes picking up something like a bracer can actually make a lane playable because they can't burst you from full HP. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that way the YouTube gods promote my video to everybody so that throughout this financial crisis that we're currently in, I will be able to support my Diet Pepsi addiction. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in another video.